You're watching FE Exam Prep with Anthony Fasano from Pass the FE Exam. In this video, we're going to calculate the capacity of a concrete stormwater pipe that forms part of the fluid mechanics section of the FE Exam. This Pass the FE Exam video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. This week's problem was created and solved by Enrique Ivers, an engineer in training. Enrique, take it away. In this example, civil engineering problem, we'll calculate the capacity of a concrete stormwater pipe. The problem statement reads, a concrete stormwater pipe is 500 feet long and has a pipe diameter of 36 inches. The inlet elevation is 165 feet and the outlet elevation is 160 feet. The Manning roughness coefficient assumed to be constant with depth of flow is 0.012. During heavy rainfalls, the stormwater pipe flows full with no surcharge. During heavy rainfalls, the capacity of the stormwater pipe is most nearly a 50 cubic feet per second, b 61 cubic feet per second, c 72 cubic feet per second, or d 83 cubic feet per second. The FE handbook is very useful for this problem. As the problem provides us with the Manning roughness coefficient, we can search for the term Manning in the guidebook if we forget that we should be using the Manning's equation. We might get multiple results, but since this is a fluids problem, we should use the only result found in the fluid mechanics section. Within this section, Manning's equation is provided to calculate either discharge, which is rate of volume in cubic feet per second, or velocity of flow in feet per second. We note that the answers provided to us at the beginning of the problem are in cubic feet per second, so we should use the first equation to calculate discharge. Referring back to the problem statement, we can identify the following variables. K is given in the FE guidebook. Since our measurements are given in feet and inches, we are using the United States Customary System Units, or USCS units. Accordingly, we should be using the factor of K that is 1.486. Lowercase n is our Manning roughness coefficient. This is given to us in the problem. It's 0.012. Note that in problem statements, the units for the Manning roughness coefficient are often omitted, but this coefficient does have units of time over the cubic root of distance. It's probably best to keep track of these units to help us verify our answer at the end of the problem. A is our cross-sectional area of the pipe. Given the diameter of 36 inches, our radius is 18 inches, or one and a half feet. Our cross-sectional area is 2.25 pi square feet. Note that we don't want to calculate the product of this as pi will likely cancel out later on in the problem. P is our wetted perimeter. As the problem states that the pipe flows full, we know that the, this is the full circumference of the pipe. Thus, P is 3 pi feet. S is the slope of the pipe. We're given both the inlet elevation and the outlet elevation across the total run of the pipe. We calculate the slope by dividing the change in elevation over the distance or the run of the pipe. Thus we find the slope to be 1% or 0.01. .01. Now that we've identified all of the variables, we can start substituting them into the Manning equation for discharge. Note that as we start substituting in those variables, we see that there actually is a variable that we haven't calculated yet, the hydraulic radius, denoted by R sub H. However, we can refer back to the FE manual, and we see that the hydraulic radius is the cross-sectional area of flow, A, divided by the wetted perimeter, P. 
Thus, we should substitute our sub h with the fraction a over p. After substituting in our variables, we have just one unknown, q, the discharge that we're searching for. We begin the process of solving for q. We simplify our fractions. We find the product to be 72.25 and verify that the units are what we expect for discharge, cubic feet per second. Referring back to our list of potential answers, we see that we're closest to answer C, 72 cubic feet per second. So we should go with answer C. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below and I will read and respond to them in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a problem you need solved. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE Exam.